Hey guys, um, my name's Megan. Uh, welcome to our middle school ministry weekend service video. I'm glad you guys decided to join. Um, if you guys don't know, some big news. This is our second week back on campus meeting together. Uh, we have a Wednesday night midweek service from 7 to 8.15 and it is a blast. It is so amazing to be back on campus gathering with you guys hanging out, having fun, being silly, and ultimately just learning about Jesus together. Um, so I hope you guys enjoy it as much as we do. And if you haven't heard about it and are um, interested and able to come, I would just so encourage you guys to meet us there Wednesday nights from 7 to 8.15. Um, you won't regret it. It is so great. Um, because we're meeting on campus, our videos will look a little bit different, but not too much. Uh, we'll still have a game, we'll still have scripture and prayer, but our worship and our teaching will be recorded on Wednesdays and put into our video for you guys to see. So it's kind of like you were there with us. It's great. Um, and with that, I hope you guys enjoy and I hope you guys have a great rest of your week. See you soon. Hey guys, um, I hope you're having a good day. Uh, I'm here with Connor and Robbie, and we are going to play a game. It's a little bit different. Um, Connor, you want to explain? Here we go. I, you know, I'll be honest. Sometimes I try to steal funny ideas, and I don't say anything about it. This time, I'm being, you know, straight from my heart. I saw this on Dude Perfect's Overtime. I thought it was hilarious. They're funnier than we are. Well, than I am. They're not as funny as Megan and Robbie. I'll say that. But. Uh, uh, I thought it would be a, uh, and I've seen the trend on YouTube. I've seen lots of YouTubers be doing something like this. It's called Tier Maker. And this week we are going to be doing fast food chains. And so I'm going to rank these different fast food establishments from S being the best to A, B, C, D, and then F minus being the worst. And uh, Megan and Robbie might disagree. They might agree. But this week, at least, I have the the power to rank them. So this is this is not... Universal, this is Connor's personal tier ranking. Are we ready? Let's do it. <laughs> All right, here we go. I have not prepared anything. This is just right off the top of my head. And I'm going, I'm going to just, okay, establish a couple things first. White Castle, never been there. That's an F minus. Um, I think that's the only one I've actually never been to. But I'm definitely throwing Sonic in an F minus. And here's why. We go to Sonic on the way back from winter camp and they take so long to get the food out. And it always delays literally like 20 minutes our buses from getting back to Calvary. And for that reason alone, that once a year trip to Sonic, all the kids love it, but they take like so long to get their food out. Kills me. Ooh, wow. You're wrong. You're wrong. Well, You're I'm going to be wrong a lot. I know that. Here's You're the thing. Um, I just thought we were talking about the food. I didn't realize we, this was uh, like oh, it's personal business. <laughs> That's no, it's the thing, Megan. It is supposed to be about the food, but Connor's the worst. Yeah, I'm making it personal. It's personal. Wow. <laughs> what else am I going to throw? Um, I'm going to give DQ. Oh. Give DQ a what? Oh, oh. Oh, oh, it's a C. It's a C. Here's the thing. Their food, really not great. And, what? And, okay, there, uh, is there even a DQ down here near Calvary at all? Is there a DQ in, like... Calvary must like, not be blessed enough to have a Dairy Queen around here. <laughs> <laughs> there was one in Eugene, and I went there. I actually used to go there quite often for the blizzards. Very good. But one time, one of their employees was, like, mean to me. And I remember it. That's probably the only time a fast food employee was mean to me. I get it. I should probably be much more gracious, but uh, I'm, I'm giving them a C. I'm giving them a C. You know All what, right. kind of, as much as this game goes, I want you to start saying stuff that makes sense, okay? That's what I want. <laughs> yeah, you're freaking all this your is... class grudges into this. Yep. And that is not exactly, okay. That's exactly what this is for. All right, Subway gets a C. A C? A C. Every other sandwich place is better. I'm talking... Jimmy that's what John's. i'm saying why is it an f minus yeah okay I'll, I'll, or, I'll throw it to a d i was i was yeah you convinced me subway great when you're in like third grade and then you come an adult and it's like this is not meat yeah. you know there was a study that their chicken was less than 40 or 50 percent chicken 
Oh. Maybe that's why it smells like onions when you walk in there. That's all it smells like. And, so, and Subway tried to sue the people who put out the study. And then in the trials, they redid the study and it was confirmed. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Don't go to Subway, people. I think I think I know what Robbie's favorite pizza place is, and I think it's Papa John's. But here's the thing: they ousted the Papa. Papa John's Papa John doesn't work there anymore. So how can you be Papa John's without Papa John? I know Connor. there's lots of controversy. I'm not going to get what? Connor. You cannot possibly Connor be ranking Franklin no, okay. Johnson. Papa John is not there anymore. Connor, okay, Franklin I forgot. Johnson. Okay. Okay, let, before Robbie continues, let me say, I'm now remembering that Papa John, I think, is a really horrible person, and that's why he was ousted, so I'm fine with it. I'm remembering that now, but my heart said at first, so, uh, Papa John's, I think, I think, I like, uh, wow, Pizza Hut, can't, hard to see, but Pizza Hut's given the C. All right, we're moving, are we moving up? I'll give. I know Robbie, you love you love some Wendy's, but I just I just did it to him. Wendy's gets a B also. Uh, really good, good prices, good good nuggets, good frosties. But I don't know, nuggets and frosties are really what like pulls it up to a B. But it's not they're they're not you know they're not taking the lead with an A. Fresh never frozen doesn't get an A. Doesn't get an A. I don't know. You Their buns me. kind of weird. You discuss who me. makes. Who makes square burgers? Who makes square burgers? How dare you? How dare you? All right. Um, you make me sick. Do I give Taco Bell an A? I don't know if I can bring to I love Taco Bell, but I feel like the day after Taco Bell. The price you pay. To be. It's the price. It's the price you pay. You know what you're doing when you're walking into it. It's delicious. I want to do it. Popeyes is a B. That's because you're I from California and all y'all eat is avocado. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Maybe. Does Connor have avocado trees by his house? Yes. It's, Absolutely. It's true. I can literally see them from where I am sitting. All right. <laughs> wow, this is this is really where it comes down to the wire. This is really where it comes down the wire. What is my S category versus the A? McDonald's. Oh, it's an A. It's an A. I can't. Oh, that's tough to do. It's good. I can't believe I, you put McDonald's above Wendy's. I cannot believe that you did that. Oh, without a doubt. Without a doubt. McDonald's is. You are oh, objectively wrong. You're no, wrong. No, the burgers You're are better at McDonald's. Wrong. The nuggets are better at McDonald's. Yeah, because it's pig poop. I love it. I love it. The frappe uh, is good. They have okay. Wendy's. Wendy's Let's have the frosty. Your reasoning here. You were holding grudges against these other fast food establishments, uh -huh. and you put McDonald's with the bad reputation in an A. Oh, I have nothing but great memories at McDonald's. I love many trips I've had to McDonald's for many years. When I was in high school, nothing was open in the Caneo Valley besides McDonald's. But doesn't now, mean that it wasn't nasty. Yeah. But it was but it was there for me when I needed them. McDonald's A. Boom. No way. McDonald's is, is not I, like is good that... friends that you can go to for counsel. It's a fast <laughs> food establishment. <laughs> but here's the thing, Megan. I shouldn't go to it for camp for counsel, but I have. And I I, I probably will uh, continue to do so. I used to, uh, yeah. Too many good memories at McDonald's. McDonald's breakfast is the best fast food breakfast no nobody nobody can speak uh besides no. let's just we knew it was inevitable chick-fil-a is getting us you know chick-fil-a's breakfast well it better or you are you're not a christian it, it has to or you're not a christian <laughs> all right okay okay well, what we got three big restaurants left all right chipotle the king of uh, fast food Mexican food, so good! Oh my god, stuff being disgusting and stuff being nasty. But Chipotle uh, has the E. coli breakout every other day, and you put them at S. Hey, I haven't gotten E. coli yet. That's a horrible thing to say. Okay. Shouldn't joke about that. Um, 
No, and then obviously in and out in and out and Chick-fil-A are, you know, definitely, I'm going to, I'm going to put it like this right there. Boom, boom. Chipotle just sneaks in. Cause I don't know. Chipotle. Sometimes you have some re- regretful day the next day, but uh, it's, it's still so worth it. An S. <laughs> All right. Each of you gets one. I'll give you your one change. Not, I, I won't change it, but what's your biggest the biggest mistake I've made? What's the biggest failure of my ranking system that I've established here today? Either of you can go first. I don't care. Papa John's is the most blessed of chain pizza establishments. And the fact that you don't recognize its greatness is absolutely absurd. I can't I believe, I I can't believe, I can't believe you have Poop City Chipotle above Papa John's. <laughs> okay, so Papa John's, Papa, John's, needs to be an Papa John's has never done you dirty. Chipotle will do you dirty depending on the day. If it's a Tuesday, don't go. All right, Thursday, here's, here's my don't go. Here's my question: What would you not put above Papa John's? Are Chick Fil A and now above Papa John's? Amen. Yes, absolutely. Okay, so you would have you would have flipped Papa John's to Chipotle. That's your absolutely. biggest grievance. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. You know what? I actually I actually have to critique your methods i mean oh. seriously you're you're gonna use <laughs> you get a megan because it, it throws off the whole entire thing if we're get talking a megan. about <laughs> satisfactory fast food places it's about the food get a megan so, so when i brought in my dq memories that was too far when i brought that was in trash that was absolutely my trash. sonic memories where would you where would you guys put sonic is sonic good I would probably put. Oh, um, go ahead, Meg. I don't know where I'd put Sonic. I don't eat Sonic enough, so I'd probably put it low anyway. But that's because I don't eat it enough. It's not because but my I'm method. You're crit- against it. I see what you're saying. You're critiquing my method, not yes, not. So that and that one might hurt more, Megan, than than critiquing <laughs> what I've done. But that's okay. Sure. That's okay. I'll I'll move on. I'll move on. All right. Well, students, here's what I want you to do. You now need to tell me what is the biggest mistake I've made with this list. So give, give a comment down below if I have just somehow disrespected your favorite fast food establishment. Let me know where, where I've gone wrong. And next week, maybe Megan or Robbie will be ranking something. We'll do something other than fast food, but we'll mix it up. We'll have some fun. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy uh, the rest of the video. Hey guys, this week we are going to be reading from Psalm 7326. Alright, so it says this. My health may fail and my spirit may grow weak, but God remains the strength of my heart. He is mine forever. Alright, let's pray. Lord God, we just give you all the glory. Thank you for being our strength. Thank you for meeting us in our grief and our sadness. Um, Lord God, allow us to know that it's okay to feel those things and that it's also okay to trust you and to lean into you. Lord God, um, I just ask that you would bring comfort to all those who are feeling the heaviness of sadness. Would you just allow them to give that to you And would you just bring them comfort and peace, Lord God? Would they know that they are loved completely and fully by you? God, we just thank you for your word. We thank you that you know us and that you love us. And it's in your name we pray. Amen.
is love like no other He's a love like no other He's a love like no other Now I can see Your love is better we hear from Connor today, God, that um, you would speak to us through him, God, that he would use your words, God, that we would hear him and be able to understand and we'd be changed, that when we leave here, we look a little bit more like Jesus. And it's in his name that we pray, amen. You guys can grab a seat, amen. Awesome, so hey, uh, as we did last week, when we enter the teaching time on Wednesday nights, you guys can take your masks off because we're over six feet. We're, you guys are sitting seven feet apart. So if you want, you can take it off. If you wanna keep it on, totally cool. I love that as well. So happy Wednesday, guys. Glad you guys are here. I'm gonna, uh, um, here, here's the thing. I'm gonna just jump right into it. Do you wanna see an embarrassing picture of me? Okay, here, actually, I'll, I'll, I'll phrase it this way. I, it's, you'll probably be like, ha, ha, ha. That's embarrassing. I kind of love this picture. We'll see. Okay, this moment. Moment of truth. Here we go. Let's, let's put up this picture. 2014 Connor Johnson. Yeah. Yeah. Round of applause for the flow. Yeah. No, no. Okay. Okay. Raise your hand if you think I should uh, grow my hair out again. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Okay. Where's my wife? Raise, is she raising her hand? Where's... Yeah, I think she is. I'm going to just say she is. She's not. She's not. Yeah, doesn't it look like I surf like every morning? I'm like, oh, dude, what's up, bro? You know, like, yeah. So I grew my hair out for two years. I didn't cut my hair. 
Isn't that crazy? I know, I kind of cropped my dad out of the picture, savage move, but you know, it happens. So uh, here, here's the thing. I had the hair for two years. After a while, I got sick of it. It was, girls, I don't know how you guys do it. Hair is so annoying. It's like everywhere, you're like sleeping, all of a sudden you're like strangling and choking on it. You're like, what the heck? I didn't, I didn't know this was a thing. I grew up with like really short hair my whole life. And so one day, I was just done. I was done and I did a horrible thing, one of the lowest points of my life. And I chopped it all off. I chopped it all off. No, I went to the hair, uh, like a hair stylist or whatever, and I cut my hair. And I know this is so goofy and random, but I cut my hair, and for like an hour, I was like, yes! And then the next day, I woke up, and I was like, no. You know, like I woke up, I was like, dang it. Like, I missed the flow, you know? Like, I missed doing the man bun, because that was a thing back in the day. Wow, I, this is embarrassing. I, I still think I should grow it out again. Anyways, but here's the thing, I like, grieved the, the loss of my hair. Like I was so, I was sad about it for like a couple weeks. Eventually, obviously I got over it and I wasn't crying, but I was like, man, like I lost something that I loved. Like this was really cool. And I, I kind of had this like process of mourning over it. I grieved it. And here's the thing. I know, goofy example, there's things in my life where I've definitely lost other things or situations that have been made me much more sad. But here's what I, what I wanna um, kind of think about today. I wanna think about the fact that, yeah, you can often, when you think of losing something, you think of losing like a person. Maybe someone that's passed, a family member, typically grandparents for someone that's maybe your age or great-grandparents or something like that. And so you think of losing that and that makes you sad. But here's the reality is there's many other things that we can lose that make us sad, like something as goofy as hair. I think we're all mourning the loss of like not being able to go to school. For some of you, it's pretty cool. But for some people who are watching this at home on, on the weekend right now, they're, they're just like, man, I wish I could go to service, but I'm you know, stuck in my house. I mean, I've, we've, we've lost out on the chance to be together again. And so as, as our, this is our last um, night talking about this, this idea of hope for a heavy heart, explaining that, man, there's these different emotions we're gonna deal with. Sometimes we have really heavy hearts. Following Jesus isn't just frolicking in a field with unicorns and, and lilies. There's sometimes some really difficult things and we process these emotions differently. And so tonight we're gonna be thinking about loss and grief. So if you have your Bible, you can open up to John chapter 11. The note card under your chair, we're gonna get to that at the very end of the service because this is a long, a lot of verses we're gonna be reading through today and I would have to give you like an entire Bible. So you can just look on the screens with me as we, as we uh, read through this passage. But if you brought a Bible, open it up to John chapter 11. Is John in the Old Testament or New Testament? New, new, yes, John's in the New Testament. It's Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. So it's the fourth book of the New Testament. It is one of the four accounts of Jesus's life, his ministry, his death, his resurrection, all of his teachings and his miracles. So we're just jumping right into Jesus's life. And it's kind of near the end of his ministry. If you have a Bible and you're open to John chapter 11, can you give me an amen? <laughs> I don't think many people brought their Bibles. All right. Let's pull up John chapter 11, verse one. If you can see the, the verse on the screen, say amen. amen. Nice, there we go, there we go. All right, John chapter 11, verse one. We're gonna read this story of Jesus experiencing loss in his life. Now a man named Lazarus was sick. He was from Bethany, the village of Mary, and her sister Martha. This Mary, whose brother Lazarus now lay sick, was the same one who poured perfume on the Lord and wiped his feet with her hair. So the sister sent word to Jesus, Lord, the one you love is sick. So this is how it starts off. There's three, four characters mainly. There's Jesus and there's these three siblings, two girls and a boy. Mary and Martha are sisters and they have a brother named Lazarus who's sick. And so they're worried about him. They're friends with Jesus. We see other stories where they've, they're hanging out with Jesus. They love Jesus. They are all friends. And so they, they uh, send word to Jesus because Jesus is in a different town. They go, Jesus, your friend, our brother Lazarus, he is sick. And this is what I wanna point out. We've said this almost every single week or something along these lines, that God's loved children still go through trials. That God, the, the, the people that he loves, he loved Mary and he loved Martha and he loved Lazarus and they still went through trials. And so why would we think our lives are any different? God's loved children still go through trials. 
So let's continue to read and see how this story develops. This is a pretty long story, and so sometimes it'll be like longer passages, but I'll try to summarize it at the end of my reading. So verse four says this. When he heard this, Jesus said, the sickness will not end in death. No, it is for God's glory, so that God's son may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. What I was talking about earlier, right? Jesus loved them, he was close to them. So when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he stayed where he was two more days. And then he sent to his, said to his disciples, let us go back to Judea. Basically, let's go visit Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. I wanna go and be with them. They are in Judea in a, in a town called uh, Bethany. And so they say, but rabbi, which is teacher, they're like, but Jesus, a short while ago, the Jews there tried to stone you and yet you're going back. Here's a huge theme in this story, a huge theme in the Bible. The, the disciples are, are turning to Jesus and they're going, wait, you can't go back there. The last time we were there, you almost got killed. Do you kind of see what's going on? Jesus is friend, he's sick and he's in a town and Jesus wants to go visit him and Jesus goes, hey, let's go to Judea to go visit Lazarus. He's sick, I wanna be with him. I wanna be with Mary and Martha. I love them and his disciples are going, what? Dude, Jesus, you're gonna die. You can't do that. They have no understanding that it's so confusing to them. Jesus, why would you do this? You are going to die. This is so dangerous. Like, yes, I love them too, but like, you can't go there. You can't do this. Jesus risks his own life with the goal of loving others. You know, if you, if you grew up in church, if you've been going to church your whole life, you might be like, okay, I've kind of heard this. Like, yes, Jesus loves people. But I want us to really think about this tonight, that Jesus enters into danger to be with the people he loves. That Jesus enters into danger to be with the people he loves. He says, you know what? The disciples, they're confused. They're going, Jesus, you can't go there. And he goes, it doesn't matter. Like dangerous, like danger or worries, it does not matter. I'm going to put myself, Jesus, in a dangerous situation so that I can be with the people that I love. Are you guys tracking with the story so far? Jesus loves these people and he's gonna walk into danger because he needs to be with them. He wants to be with them. And the disciples, they're like, this doesn't make much sense to us. So we're gonna pick up the story as it continues in verse nine. Jesus answers them. He, he turns to them. He says, are there not 12 hours of daylight? Anyone who walks in the daytime will not stumble for they see, uh, for they see by this world's light. It is when a person walks at night that they stumble for they have no light. After he had said this, he went on to tell them, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I'm going there to wake him up. His disciples replied, Lord, if he sleeps, he'll get better. Jesus had been speaking of his death, but his disciples thought he meant natural sleep. The disciples are just not tracking with what Jesus is saying. So he has, says this in verse 14. Says, so then he tells them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And for your sake, I am glad I was not there so that you may believe, but let us go to him. Then Thomas said to the rest of the disciples, let us also go that we may die with him. Here's how the story is playing out. Jesus says, listen, I'm gonna put my life in danger to be with the people that I love. I love them and I don't care what happens to me. I want to be with them. And the disciples are like, no, Jesus, don't go. And then Jesus starts talking and they're kind of getting confused. They don't know what he's saying. And he just says to them, like, listen, Lazarus, he's actually dead. Jesus is God, so he knows everything that's happening. He knows what's going on, even though he's not there. And so he turns to them, he says, listen, Lazarus is dead, and we are still going to go. So he makes this decision. Man, we are going to leave where we're at, enter into danger to be with Lazarus, because he's saying he is dead, and he is going to wake him up. And the disciples, they're kind of confused, but they say this, what Thomas says to the rest of them. He goes, let us also go that we may die with him. I love this. Thomas says, you know what? We're doing this together. We are in this together. You're not gonna go. I'm not gonna leave yet. Like, no, all of us, and we might die together, but I'm gonna still be with you, Jesus. We're gonna skip the next few verses. There's a large chunk, um, but here's the summary that Jesus and the disciples, they get to reach Mary and they get to reach Martha and um, they start to have this conversation with them. Mary and Martha run over to find Jesus to talk with him. They kind of, they turn to Jesus, right? Like, Jesus, our brother's dead. Didn't you love him? Like, if you were here, Jesus, this wouldn't have happened is what they start to say to 
him and their conversations with them, they ask, why are you not here? They say, you're the Messiah, you're the savior. Jesus, where were you? Our brother's dead. And where were you? After this conversation, Jesus sees her pain. We're gonna see how it goes out in verse 33. When Jesus saw her weeping, Mary and Martha are crying over the fact that their brother has passed. They're in grief. They have lost their brother and they're overwhelmed with sadness, right? Jesus, and they're talking to Jesus. Jesus, you're the one I love. You're the Messiah. Why is this happening? We've lost our brother. When Jesus sees her weeping and the Jews who had come along with her also weeping. So now there's a group of people. Everyone's crying. They're so sad. They're so distraught. They're so grieving the loss of Lazarus. It says that Jesus was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. I don't want to skip over this. Jesus was deeply moved in his spirit and troubled. But didn't Jesus just tell his disciples that he knows Lazarus is dead? Like Jesus knew that Lazarus was dead. Jesus knew that they were gonna have this conversation. He sees the people that he loves crying and it says he, his spirit was deeply moved. He was troubled. He says, where have you laid him? He asked. And they said, come and see, Lord, they replied. And then a famous verse, you might've heard it. You might've memorized it because it's two words. It says that Jesus wept. <laughs> Anyone memorize this verse because like your parents were like, you gotta memorize it first. And you're like, this one's really short. <laughs> you know, like, mom, I memorized a verse at church today. John eleven thirty five. 35, Jesus wept, boom. <laughs> like, so I, I remember when I was a kid, like if anyone was like, oh, you gotta memorize a Bible verse, I'd be like, hmm, which one am I gonna review? Oh yeah, <laughs> this one, John eleven thirty five. 35. So it's like a famous verse. Yeah, Jesus wept and it's funny. It's two words long, but I want us to sit and to think about this, that Jesus knew Lazarus was gonna die. He knew he was gonna have these conversations. He knew that this would happen. He knew that they would be crying and he sees them crying, the people that he loves. And it says his spirit was deeply moved. He is troubled. God knows what's happening. And when he sees the people that he loves in pain, he cries. I love this. <laughs> Jesus, the God of the universe, comes down onto earth and he cries. He's just a real human. He sees his friends crying and he weeps. Here's what I want us to think about is that, man, Jesus had great compassion, great love for the people who are crying, even though he knows the, the pain that they are in, he knows what was going to happen. He totally knew it all and he was still deeply moved. Students, when you're experiencing loss, when you're experiencing sadness and grief and you're just overwhelmed with emotions, God, yes, he knows what you're going through, but let me tell you this right now, students who are sad, who have experienced loss in the last seven months, Jesus sees your pain and he is deeply moved in his spirit. He's troubled. It breaks God's heart. When your schools were canceled, I think God's heart was troubled. I think it broke his heart, knowing that you, his children whom he loves, were sad when you couldn't go to school. Maybe when your friends or your family members get sick or you're just worried about what is going on in this world, God's heart is troubled. It breaks his heart when your heart is broken. And so if you've experienced loss in any way, whether you knew someone really, really well and they're gone or just you knew of somebody that is no longer here or just some sort of situation, God sees that, he knows it and his heart is troubled. He sees you, he loves you and it breaks his heart. When we couldn't go to summer camp this last summer, who here was maybe sad about that? I know I was. It was my favorite part of the year, favorite week of the year, every single year, going to summer camp and worshiping together and running around and doing belly flops in the pool and just having, meeting new friends. And man, we couldn't go. And my heart was troubled. I cried about it. I was so sad that we couldn't go to camp. I don't know if you're, you were sad about that. You had that loss that we couldn't go to camp together. I think Jesus, God saw that and his heart was deeply troubled. And it broke his heart because our hearts were broken. Can I get really personal, I think, here for some of you? For some of you, um, for some of you, these last three weeks have been incredibly um, 
is specifically difficult. And I'm thinking maybe about the sixth graders at Oaks or any Oaks Christian students because you guys lost a, a, another student a couple weeks ago. And I don't know what that's been like for you. I've talked with some of you. I've known that some of you have cried about it. Or maybe you've processed it. Maybe you knew Mark and Jacob Iskander or maybe you just knew of them. But here's the reality. This community, students who are sitting right here and even watching this later on, have experienced a loss. And I want you to know that God, yeah, he knew that was gonna happen, but he loves you. And his heart was broken, just like your heart was broken. Man, I I know that many of the leaders here at Calvary have been praying for you guys. You've been thinking about that. If you're still processing it and a year later from now, you get sad thinking about Mark and Jacob and how they passed. Know that God sees that. (laughs) His heart's broken and he loves you. We see this story with Jesus, that he wept. Jesus was a man who cried when the people that he loved were sad. But here's what I want you to know. Jesus, yes, his heart was broken, he was troubled and he wept, but there is hope. This story does not end with Jesus crying. This story does not end in verse 35 saying Jesus wept. The story does not end with Jesus crying. There is hope in this story and there's hope for when you experience loss, for when you experience grief, when life comes at you and you were not mentally or emotionally prepared for it. When when God's heart breaks, he does something about it. When God's heart breaks over the fact that your heart is broken, when God's heart breaks over the fact that we have lost so much in the last few months, he does something about it. There is hope in Jesus. In verse 36, it continues, then the Jews said, said, see how he loved him. I'm gonna read a lot of uh, verses right here. But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Jesus, once more deeply moved, he walks over to the tomb. It was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance. Take away the stone, he said. But Lord, said Martha, the sister of the dead man, by this time there is a bad odor for he has been there for four days. (laughs) Quick pause, I love, this just shows me when I read verses like this, man, the Bible is not made up. Who would have thought about writing this part of the story in? But this is a real part of the story. Jesus is gonna go move the, uh, the, the, the door, the stone open. And Martha goes, Jesus, like, he, like it's been four days. This is gonna smell bad. <laughs> like that's in the Bible. This is real. This is a real story with Jesus and Martha. And Jesus says to her, did I not tell you that if you believe you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. Then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this is for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, Jesus called out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen and cloth around his face. Jesus, he he says to them, Excuse me, got lost in, uh... sorry, I can't, I... what's the last verse? <laughs> 44. 44, I'll get to that in a second, go back. So, okay, so Lennon is wrapped around his face. Jesus, here's the point of the story. Jesus speaks and Lazarus walks out. Do you remember last week's story? There was this storm, the people were afraid, they were worried, and what happened when Jesus spoke, lives were changed, right? The storm was calmed, and this week we see Jesus speaks and Lazarus' body rises from the grave and he walks out. By the very power of the voice of Jesus, he raises Lazarus from the dead. And here you might have seen is the question that I think some of us ask. (laughs) Like, okay, this is a story a long time ago, but what about my life? What about when I go through things that are difficult? Here is the question. If Jesus can raise the dead, then why doesn't he keep doing it? You might think that. I've thought that. I've read this and I've gone, wait, if Jesus can raise Lazarus from the dead, like why doesn't he keep doing it? Doesn't he love the people that I love? Like, why, why do we still go through these difficult things? Jesus, if you can raise Lazarus from the dead, then what's going on? Why does, not, does he um, not continue to do it? Here is the answer. He will. 
The answer to this question is that he doesn't or that he won't, but that Jesus will. This is the hope of the Christian faith. Our faith is not just based on a Bible that was written 2,000 years ago that talks about Jesus that lives a long time ago who had some good teachings and that's it. Our hope is that Jesus is gonna return as king and that Jesus is gonna come back to this world and uh, be the, the king of the world again, give us a new heaven and a new earth and raise all of us from the dead so that we can be with Jesus in his presence in heaven. Revelation 21 verses one through four says this. It is the, the prophecy. It is what we know will happen at the end of times. It is our hope in the future when you experience loss or grief, remind yourself of this truth. It says this, that then I saw, this is a prediction of what is gonna happen in the heaven, not a prediction, this is a promise of what is gonna happen in the future. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. There was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne, God speaking, look, God's dwelling place is now among the people. He's saying, look, now we are united together and he will dwell with them. They will be his people and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will no longer be death, no longer be mourning or crying or pain for the old order of things has passed away and he's going to be making all things new. Students, this is our hope. When you are experiencing loss and grief and going, wait, Jesus, why don't you raise people from the dead? Here's the truth, he will. At one day, we're gonna be with Jesus. There's gonna be no more death or tears or sadness or mourning. We are going to be with God in heaven, rejoicing, no longer with tears, no longer with sadness, no longer with pain. And so here's how I'm gonna conclude this. So what? Like, what, what does this mean for your life today? What does this mean for you who've experienced uh, some sort of loss some sort of grief, some sort of mourning in the past or whether you're going to in the future because I promise you, you will. I'm gonna go back to one of the things I said earlier that Jesus enters into danger to be with the people that he loves. That is not just a truth we see in the story, that is the truth we see in our lives and that is how uh, the scriptures lay out. Uh, another thing that I said is that the story doesn't end with Jesus crying. Right, I said that story doesn't end with Jesus crying and this story doesn't end with just Lazarus being raised from the dead. It ends when Jesus enters into danger again so that he could die on the cross for you and for me, so that he could rise from the grave. This story does not end with Jesus crying and Jesus enters into danger for your sake and for mine. Jesus says, man, here is a problem. Here is a loss. They have lost their ability to be with me because we've sinned, we've messed up, we lie to our parents, we get angry when we shouldn't, we say things we shouldn't. All, sort, all of the time, we struggle with these, with these frustrating things we do, these sins. And God said, man, this is a loss. My people can't be with me. And so he sent Jesus into danger, just like we saw in the story, into danger to die for you and for me. And the story ends with Jesus rising from the grave. And our hope is not in just a story that happened 2,000 years ago. Our hope is that we know in the future Jesus is gonna come back as king and there'll be no more tears or sadness anymore. So what do we do until then? We praise God. We say, God, we have a great hope in the future. God, we know what you're gonna do. Yes, my heart is broken, but God, I'm gonna remind myself, I'm gonna remind my friends, and my friends are gonna remind me that one day there will no longer be pain, and until then, I'm gonna praise God because he loves me. I'm gonna praise God because he loves me, and I'm gonna tell the whole world about Jesus and what he's done for me and what he's done in this world world. We're going to learn from Mary and Martha. We're going to cry with one another. Students who are experiencing sadness and loss, whether it's someone who's passed away or just the loss of what could have been over the last seven months, would you find hope in Jesus? The story doesn't end with Jesus crying. The story ends when God says, I'm going to do something about their pain and he's gonna speak into our lives and we know there's gonna be no longer pain or mourning anymore. But until then, we can cry together. We can bring our emotions uh, to each other and to God and say, Lord, my heart's broken. God, I'm so sad, but God, I know you're in control. I'm gonna praise you 
anyways. We can experience the emotions of loss and grief, but remember that our hope is in Jesus. And so that's why we're gonna praise him. That's why it's so important that we're coming together on Wednesdays and coming together on Sundays is because tonight we're gonna praise God. We're gonna lift up his name to the highest of heavens. <laughs> we're outside. We can just be thinking about how, man, God is sitting on his throne and we are praising him saying, God, man, my heart is heavy. My, I, I'm struggling with this loss, but God, I know that you're in control. God, it is so much better your way, Father. And so let's do that tonight. Would you pray with me? Father, I thank you that you love us. God, I thank you that you love the people who have broken hearts. God, I thank you for the story of Mary and Martha. Their brothers died and your heart broke for them, Father. That Jesus was with them and he cried. His spirit was troubled. He was moved because the ones that he loved were in pain. So Father, I know there are students, I know there are leaders here tonight who are in pain, who are frustrated at the, the loss of what could have been. Frustrated, God, that they just can't go to school. Frustrated that they can't just go over to their grandparents' house and give them a hug. God, many, uh, some of our community has experienced the loss of a life. And so God, I, I, I pray over those students who are mourning the loss of a classmate. And God, we know that your heart is broken when our hearts are broken. And so Father, would you bring comfort to them? Would you give them hope tonight? And would you help us, God, to take our emotions to you, whether it's through worshiping you with hands raised or God, whether it's through writing down our prayers. Father, would you help us to worship you? Would you help us to look to you? And God, would you help us to find hope in you? We pray these things in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen.